everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. For he is a God. He is a loving God. And he is a forgiving God. And I just thank him for everything that he has done and everything that he will do. You know, I was thinking, you know, a lot of times, you know, during this time, you know, people chase after a lot of things. But you know, the word of God said, what does a man profit? To gain the whole world and to lose his soul. You profit nothing. You can live good here on earth, but when you don't have a precious home to go to, you profit nothing. And I just thank God. You know, you think about when you give your life to Christ, no matter what happens, you win either way. You win here on earth and you win eternal life. So I just thank God for being God. And you know, for waking me up this morning and bringing me here today. For there's no place like the house of God to worship and to praise in. And I thank God for a house to praise in. Because during this pandemic, a lot of churches closed. And some people don't have a home to worship in. But I thank God for the forward thinking pastor that we are able to be on Facebook Live. We're able to have conference calls. We're able to have Zoom. You know, I just thank God for all the technology, you know, that he takes advantage of. So we just ask that we just welcome you into our sanctuary, and we welcome you also into Facebook Live. But we are Refuge Simple Ministry, and we are a fellowship of love. And we're located at 105 Dushley Larry Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. We're under the direction of Dr. Bishop Larry Solomon, who is our senior pastor, Dr. Elder Tyrone Sherman, who is our associate pastor, and Elder Thomas Ponder, who is our assistant pastor. We invite you to every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Facebook Live worship and praise service, and also into the sanctuary to lift up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But there's no place like this sanctuary to praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also we invite you at 8 o'clock p.m. for our Bible study, where we are learning the Word of God. For the Word of God was living then, and it's living now, and it will be living forevermore. So we ask that you to lift up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and pray this holy name with us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 We're praising right now, Lord Jesus. We're praising and I'm praising King. And it made me think about my Auntie Peaches. And I watched my Auntie Peaches fight breast cancer for a long time. And watching her, it showed me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work, say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work, say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know these words, sing it with us. No weapon, all the gifts they shall prosper. 
Pray for our community. Pray for our leaders. Pray for that person you passed on the street this morning. Pray for that person that has has taken on your mind. The Bible declares the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous of your life. Other times I'm hot. 
mesmo em tudo. Esse é a fé em mim.
Her favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on to your own understanding. Amen. A scripture that she stands on all the time is Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which by which thy knoweth upon thee. I know her, I've known her for over 35 years, and I know that she stands on God's word each and every day. Missionary Phipps is passionate about her work with the disabled. She loves to care for people who do not are unable to care for themselves. I introduce to you my sister, my friend, Missionary Rita Phipps. Give her a hand. She has blessed me many times with many stories, and I love her so. Missionary Phipps. Praise the Lord, everybody. This month is worship in peace. We're talking about breast cancer. And before I say another word, I just want to acknowledge the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, I thank and praise you for this new day, a day which I have never seen before. I pray and ask, Lord Jesus, that you will bless me, that you will bless the people in the audience, that you will bless every soul who hear the words that I speak. I want the words to come from you, Lord. Send them like dew from heaven and fall on me and fall on this place, oh God. We honor you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we magnify you. Lord, we're here today because of your grace. We're here today because of your mercy and your compassion, Lord. Nothing that we have done, nothing that have made us great, but all because of you. We give you the glory today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as we know, October is Annual Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's the month we remember and celebrate those who have passed on and those who are living and still surviving breast cancer. I'm a 21-year breast cancer survivor. And I Sometimes when things happen to you, you have to ask, why, why me? But in my case, I didn't ask why, why me? Because I have a family of breast history. And God tell us, and not only God, but wisdom is something that we need. And our wisdom also is power. Knowledge is power. Now in my family, my mother, I'm gonna start back with my grandmother as far as I know. My grandmother in the early 50s was diagnosed with breast disease. They didn't tell her it was breast cancer, but they said breast disease. Later on, my mother uh, had a growth on her breast. They removed it one time and it came back. They removed it a second time and it came back. They removed it a third time and it came back. After the third time, they said they're not gonna remove it. It's just some type of breast disease, but not breast cancer. Mm. Then in my case, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, well, I'm telling you one thing I did. When you know you got a history of breast cancer in your family, and remember, the Church of God is our family too. The same thing that happened to us in here happened to the ones on the outside. So learn, learn, know your breast, know your body, because nobody should know your body better than you, not even the doctors, because you can tell the doctor what's going on and he can take it from there. But anyway, my, uh, when the breast, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I'm telling you, when my, <laughs> sur when my surgeon uh, told me what it was, I was, a fearful, and I looked at her, and all I want to know how long I got. And she said, she said, uh, uh, she started doing like that, and you know what I'm thinking, good, bad, good, bad, what, what? She said, maybe 70 years, maybe 90 years, and that's for man, that's for a woman telling me that. But what about God? When He tell us something, 
it's better than man. It's guaranteed because he know everything about us. He know our body. He know everything. So when God let us know something and give us the assurance, we know we got it. But I know I like what the doctor said too. She said, 70 years, 90 years, so I'm thinking on that. And I'm giving God praise and honor each and every day. And what I found out when I was going through, what comforted me was the testimony of a little sister that's sitting here today. She would always get up Tuesday night, Friday night. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And she would say, you know, the Lord called me to do seven things. I'm going to pray for seven days. I'm going to fast for seven days. I'm going to take the anointing oil. I'm going to I'm gonna anoint my breast. And I'm going to read certain scriptures. She read Psalms 20. You know what? Even though my children at home, they imitate the people at God, how they shout, what they say when the preacher get up, how he do it, they imitate everybody. And they imitate this sister too, but guess what? When breast cancer came upon me, <laughs> I was gonna imitate, I got real. <laughs> I would say, Lord, it worked for her, you have no respect to person. So what I did, I got out my Bible, and I, I said, Lord, because I had those seven things wrote down. I went down, and okay, I said, I'm going to put a date here. All these days, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast, I'm going to read this scripture, I'm going to knock my prayer. And guess what? It was one more thing she had on that was that Holy Communion. We take Holy Communion very lightly. But Holy Communion is not to be taken lightly. Okay, I confess my sins before the Lord. And when I take that bread, I remember that his body was broken for me. See, we got to fight with the word of God. That's you can right. and hop and do all that. But when the Satan come against you, then he's not going to stop. He might leave you for a season, but he's coming back. But we got to remember, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But this is the part of the scripture I like, where God says, But I come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. So anyway, I, I think about that with the brain. And, I, and, and it's, hold on, we can do this at home. We don't have to do it because God says, often as you do this, you show forth my death till I come. So I'm showing praises to him. You made this sacrifice for me. I'm going through this, and I need you. I need everything, Lord. So I would do the Holy Communion, take the bread, take the wine, and I just gave God glory, and I continue to give him the glory. I give him the glory, I give him the glory. And you know what? A lot of times when we pray, you can go on down on our knees, go down on one, coming up on the other. But when you know somebody who's going through, and when you got breast cancer in your family, when you go down, you're going to stay a little bit longer. And that is because there's so many women in my family, and we know that we have a history of breast cancer. So I pray for them. I pray for them. And it's not only breast cancer. We take this month as the month where we um, celebrate breast cancer. But there's other things that's going on. It's diabetes. It's high blood pressure. It's heart disease. People have, and because of the pandemic, mental issues. It's so much to pray for. So I always try to uh, have a prayer list, call out people's names, but go before the Lord asking for help because only he can help us. He made our body. He knows everything about our body. And also, I want to share just a few things with you uh, about breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women in the United States. It's second to lung cancer. Now, breast cancer is just not women. You know, most men, you know, you probably think, you know, you don't have to worry about it. But if you born, if you are born a female, you you have a risk of getting breast cancer. And oh, yeah. another risk, the second risk in breast cancer, not only first is female, the second as you get older. And all of us want to live forever, right? Yeah. So sometimes as we get older, you know, it's some things that we're gonna have to uh, ward off, some things that we're gonna have to try to prevent. Today, there are over 4 million survivors and people living with breast cancer. That's a big number. And it's getting higher every day. So we're going to have to learn to pray and feed on God's word. Okay, we have Sunday school here. You know, that's where you can get your strength. You can learn these scriptures. You can learn what the scriptures mean. So when it's time for you to go through anything, I mean anything, 
you have something to fight the devil with. You're going to have the word of God. We're going to need it. We are going to need it. That's men and women. Now, I saw in my family, the youngest person with breast cancer was 15. You know, we never thought it would be her. But breast cancer, any kind of disease, disease can get you at any age. It's not just breast cancer. Anything can get you. So stay in God's hand. Okay, and they said only about 15% of women with breast cancer have close family members. That's only 15%. What about the rest of the percent? I know where I stand in that percentage, and I know that God is a keeper, a way maker, a killer. I know he's all that, but I know I have to pray. Also, black women. Black women are often diagnosed with late cancer, stage four. And it's because a lot of times, we work it. We got to take care of the children. We got to clean the house. We got to do so many things, wear so many different hats that we neglect ourselves. We have got to take time to relax. We have got to take time and to do something for ourselves. If we do something for ourselves and keep ourselves, then we'll be able to help others. And also, I want to share with you seven tips that will possibly lower your risk for breast cancer. Okay? You gotta eat mostly vegetables and fruit. A lot of people don't wanna eat vegetables, but guess what? It can save your life. Okay? Another thing is drinking water. A lot of people don't like water. If you don't like water, put a little lemon in it, but you got to get that water. Exercise. Ooh, that's a hard thing to do. No, if you wanna live, it's not. You got to exercise, and you don't have to do a particular exercise. You're going to have to exercise something that you like, something that you stick to, okay? Exercising is so important. We got to maintain a healthy weight. What might be healthy for me might not be healthy for you, but we got to keep our weight in balance. And also sleep. You can't burn the candle at both ends and expect to be healthy. Uh, Help. You gotta go to bed. You gotta get anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep a night. And don't smoke. Smoke gets in your hair. Smoke gets in your clothes, your furniture, your car. Smoke gets everywhere. Don't smoke because when you smoke, you hurt others. Not only yourself, but you're hurting others. And get screened. It's so important to uh, do your part to prevent breast cancer. Do self-exams, uh, get your mammogram. And that's one thing about the type of breast that I had, the, the cancer did not show on the mammogram. I was getting regular mammograms, but the mammograms came back negative. But there are other ways they can detect breast cancer. What we got to do is just walk in our faith. We come into church, we come to prayer, we do all kinds of things, and we say we love the Lord, we love the Lord, but what's going to happen when these things come upon us, just like they come upon the world? We're going to have to use the Word of God. The Word of God is what keeps us. The Word of God is our safety. Stay in the Word of God. Breast cancer is, you know, we celebrate working in pink, but uh, there's some tears behind it. I see Sister Ernestine looking at me. She knows she's been there. Yeah. It's not easy. Chemotherapy, it's not easy. That's right. And you think, I'm telling you, I'm telling you really what bald head means. Some people, your hair thin on the side or whatever. Breast cancer can take your hair out from the roots. I'm talking about no hair. You look like an onion, a slick onion. All hair gone. You take a shower, you look down, everything's gone. Those drugs are powerful. God gave man knowledge, but also he gave us knowledge and wisdom too. And we're going to put him to the test that he's our keeper. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. And her message for breast cancer. Amen. And truly, I just thank the Lord for that. Amen. She's a wonderful teacher. Yes, she is. Amen. And what we've been doing now, amen. That's where I got part of my learning from. Amen. From her. Amen. And truly, I just praise God for being here today. Are you happy today? Yes. Amen. 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 You know, I just, I just thank the Lord for being here because it had not been for Him, I don't know where I would be. No. Amen. But I praise the Lord. I'm not going to hold you long. I'll just have a few words and then we can go ahead and go get something to eat or whatever we're going to do. Go to Sunday school. Amen. And we just going to praise the Lord. Amen. And truly, that's a very interesting situation on breast cancer. Amen. And I, I have part of my family, uh, not my immediate family, but part of my family, my, one of my aunts, amen, she's had suffering with cancer. And, you know, she talks about the same thing that she, Sister Pelt, was talking about. Amen. But truly, I pray the Lord, she's still here. Amen. amen. She's saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. And she said, I, I'm still here. Amen. And that's what we have to do. We have to press our way out. Amen. Don't look at the bad thing. Look on the good thing, the good side. Amen. Because if the Lord take you, you know where you're going anyway. Y'all will hear me. I said, if you go, if you go away, you know where you're going anyway. Amen. Amen. I just praise the Lord for that. Amen. Truly, I praise the Lord for that. Amen. I, like I said, I'm just going to have a few words. Amen. I appreciate the opportunity of a sermon to me speaking. And I just like to emperate on the, the on the male course. Amen. It just they just going by and big and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then uh, I mean, the Coleman is just, just doing his job. Amen. Amen. I think he's doing his job. Amen. Inviting more people to come and be a part of that male course. Amen. Amen. The Lord will always bless you in a marvelous way. You may not be saying that, but he'll get you in two. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. 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 God. Amen. We just want to call your attention to a passage of scripture that's written Amen. In the book of Psalms, amen, the third chapter of Psalms, amen, and this is one verse of it, amen, that's all it's going to take for me to speak, and go ahead and sit down, amen, praise the name of the Lord, I'm so happy to see all of you, amen, Sister Dennis, we're happy to see you back, amen, amen. praise the Lord, amen. praise the Lord for you, amen, and we praise the Lord for that, amen, praise be the name of God, amen. Psalm, the third division of Psalm, and this one verse, the fifth verse, Psalm 38. This sort of relates to what, what we are celebrating now. Amen. And I, I, I pondered this on my way back home. Amen. I, I was pondering, what am I going to speak on, Lord? You know, tell me something. Amen. And he said, well, uh, Psalms. And as I began to write and look at Psalms and make my little notes, I ran across this particular scripture and I said, this is the one. Amen. Praise be the name of God. Psalms 30 and 5. And it reads, the, His anger endures but a full moment. In favor, His favor is for life. His anger only lasts a moment, but favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. The joy comes in the morning. And that's what we want to talk about today. Our subject, joy in the morning. Amen. Joy in the morning. You know, we have a lot of things to be thankful for. Amen. You know, sometimes we look at things and, and, and things just don't work out as we supposed to, that we thought it should work out. Amen. And you know, we have a lot of clouds hanging low and fog and we just can't see our way out. But the Lord is able yes, to do all things. I said the Lord is able to do all things. Yes, he, he said now you, you may you may get uh, cry a little bit but that's not going to last forever. Amen. Because he said life from him is for good. Amen. And once we get ourselves in line with what Christ wants then we are all right. Amen. Amen. For I heard that Isaiah in the 40s, 31, that says, They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up the wings of the eagle. And when you think about an eagle spreading her wings, she's kicking her uh, people safe, her little young safe. Amen. 
They should run as a mean of an eagle. They should run and not be worried. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. And so when we look at these scriptures, we sort of put them together, but you know one thing we, we always forget. When we're going through things, we're going through trials, we're going through tribulation, we forget sometimes. But you have to read Hebrew 11 and 1, and it says that, that, that the Lord, what he will do. We got to have faith in Christ. It's okay to be thinking on the things that the doctor said, but you got to have that faith in Christ. But faith is the substance of things. Folks, but we haven't seen anything. We don't know anything about it. It's there. And when we get that faith, joy can come in the morning. You not, not, may not be able to see the dark clouds through the dark clouds now. You may not see the fog right now. But if you wait on the Lord, you shall renew your strength. Yeah. He said, I'm going to mount you up a weed like an eagle, run and not weary, walk and not faint. That's what he says. All we have to do is believe and trust in him. People today that are in these situations with their medical bodies, but we got to remember what Psalm says in 46 and 1. He said, God is our refuge. I said, God is our refuge. Yeah. And when I think about joy in the morning, you know, I, I, I think about the resurrection of Christ. Because that morning, or when he rolled, he rolled with all power in his hand. Psalm 46 and 1 said, God is our refuge. And I'm spent a present help in the time of trouble. No matter what the situation may be, God is able to do all things. He said, I'll be there. All you have to do is just call me and have faith. Joy will come in the morning if we do that. That's why I love the scripture that says, when David wrote, he said that uh, 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 the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants you, he wants to guide you into all truth. Yes. Therefore, we have to depend on him. Because we know that God will make a way. Sometimes it looks like it's getting darker and darker and darker. You just cannot see the light. But just wait there. Wait on the Lord. When it seems like nobody seems to care, just wait on the Lord. Because sometimes we're going to have problems and, and people just not going not, not to know anything about it. But all we have to do is just, just wait on the Lord. He said, you shall renew your strength. Wait on it. Wait on it. Things happen, just wait on it. The dark power may be hanging low, but just wait on it. You can hardly see through it, but just wait on the Lord. He said, you shall renew your strength. He'll mount up the wings like an eagle run and not be where to walk and not be. Yes, yes. But we got to have that one thing that Hebrew says in Hebrew 11, 1 and 8. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for yes. and the assurance. I like that. And the assurance yes. about what we do not see. You can't see faith. Amen. But you know it's there. Yes. The people didn't see Jesus Christ. They told him that he was the Christ, but they did, they did not see it. They hung him on the cross, but he said on that third day he rose. Amen. He's rising today. Whatever your problem may be, he's rising. He's ready to do whatever you want him to do. All you have to do is ask and believe and trust in him. They said, yeah, you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He said, no, I'm with you always. always. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Weeping it may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. How many believe that today? How many believe that today? You may be sad and hard, yes. but 
just believe and trust in Christ. He's able to do all things. All we have to do is trust and believe. Trust and believe. Keep that in mind. Trust and believe. And he's able to supply all your need. All we have to do is believe and trust in him. He's able to hear us every time we call. He hears us. I'm reminded today of a young lady that had a condition. And her, her name, her name was uh, uh, Veronica. Y'all know who Veronica is? Amen. Veronica was that lady that had that suffering, had the hemorrhage going for 12 long years. Now, if you want to look at the scripture, you can, you can check, uh, uh, I believe it's Luke 8, 43 to 42, and then uh, Matthew 9, 20, 22, and then Mark uh, 5, 25, and then St. Luke 8 and 43. Veronica had a hemorrhage. And she went from doctor to doctor, just like we do. We go to, we go to the doctor, uh, hand her, oh, I got to go to the doctor. My head hurts, I can go to the doctor. We want to be sure of things. But the only sure you're going to ever have it is in Christ Jesus. That's right, that's right. Yes. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Yes. Yes. So she went to doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, and he was just getting worse and worse and worse. But one day, she heard about Jesus. Hallelujah. It's something about that name they were saying today. It, it, it's something about the name Jesus. It just, just do something for you. I mean, you heard about Jesus. She walked in his path. We have to walk in Jesus' path today. He's standing back. We're just waiting. She didn't put herself off on anybody else. She said, I know if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Because he is the one. Hallelujah. Yes. And she did. And oh, what joy she had. He said, somebody touch me. They said, no, Lord, I ain't going to feel somebody touch me. He said, I know. I know. Because that that, 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 that they got is going to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just reach out and touch the Lord. But he's coming by all the time. He's coming your way all the time. Just reach out and touch the Lord. Ooh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. When you come to church, just touch the Lord. When you're praising God, give different things, just touch the Lord. He said, I'm able. Then I think about Job. And Job was another good example. Job has suffered a loss of everything. A lot of people would have went crazy if they had it in that. Well, Job didn't go crazy, but he uh, he, he, he said he said that uh, uh, which he never had lived, but at a particular time. Why? Because he was dependent on Christ. He didn't know what the situation might be. The cloud was too low for him to understand what all of this was happening. But the Lord knows. He knows all things. People say, well, once you get saved, things are not going to happen. It's going to happen. I never would have thought that I had to take operation on my knee. But it's it happening. I got to let it, let it happen. Amen. If I want to run some more, I got to let it happen. I already told you that. But the only thing is, I, don't, I can't sit at home the whole 30 days waiting to heal up and everything. I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but the Lord knows. Amen. Amen. And Job was just, everybody just, just penalizing for the, for the, because everything that was happening to him, they say, you have, you have to see it. Why don't you just touch God and die? Job, he said, no, 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 no. I'm going to wait for my change to come. How many wait for the change to come now? How many wait? Something that you you you, you know that is bothering you. You just waiting for it to happen. It's gonna be change. It'll be changed so bad you won't even know it. 
It'd be just like the resurrection of Christ. He rose so fast and came out with all power in his hand. Even though they pierced him in his side, he said, I got the power. And that's what we have to do today. Christ is the answer to all our problems, to all our situations. No matter what the situation may be, the Lord is able. Yes, he is. When we are in trouble, we can depend on him to get us out. If we depend on him and have that faith, he can do it. But I have to stress that very, very important. You've got to have faith. If you don't have that faith, if you're a person that let other people influence you, not the doctor, the nurses, well, once you get this, such, such thing can happen, then you got to have faith. If you don't have faith, it's not going to happen. What we need to do is depend on Him. Because one joy morning, it's going to all be over. It's going to all be over. All your trials, all your tribulations, it's going to be over. And we're going to be caught up to meet Him in the air. And some can never be with the Lord. Won't be no more crying. Won't be no more cancer. Won't be no more difficulties or uh, uh, anything like that. Because one day, we're going where he is. And we're going to see him as he is. Hallelujah. As I told you, our message for today, I just want to tell you that we're going to have these problems. They're not going to go away. Because you remember what happens. The devil came to do three things. Kill, steal, and destroy. And you're a human being. It's like anybody else. And he's going to try you. Just like he did with Job. He's going to try you. He's not going to kill you, but he's going to try you. Amen. And you've got to depend on who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Yeah. It's our prayer. If there is anyone today that would like to accept Christ as their Savior, you may come at this time. Anyone need prayer? Just come.